We decided to conduct the study because um, as breast cancer doctors, we were very well aware that we are, were over-treating many women with early breast cancer. And the explanation is very straightforward. You know, once the disease has metastasized, it's not curable anymore. So you feel you have a very big responsibility when we, you see women with early disease. You know that this is the time where you are going to be able to cure them. But that leads to over-treatment. Over-treatment with endocrine therapy, over-treatment with trastuzumab, and with chemotherapy. But that's really the worst. Because if you are going to offer chemotherapy to a patient who is relatively good risk and the benefit of chemotherapy will be very small, a 2% gain in survival, for example, this will be counterbalanced by the risk of chemotherapy, some of which are really very serious, like getting secondary cancers or getting congestive heart failure, for young women getting a premature menopause and then having problems with cognitive function, being unable to continue to work, so there is also a very high socioeconomic burden when you give chemotherapy. So we really felt it was time to look for a very strong biomarker that would help us making better decisions and reduce the prescription of chemotherapy that is unlikely to have any value for the women. So mama print is one of several gene expression signatures. There have been others developed in the meantime that can really, in a powerful way, separate a group of women who are going to do very well without chemotherapy from a group of women who are not going to do well. So that was what impressed us in 2002, is the separation of the curves and really the fact that the low-risk mama print group had very, very few relapses and deaths in a 10-year period. But you know, there are many biomarkers published in the cancer literature that are not used in the clinic because they have never been validated. And validating a biomarker is really very hard. And indeed, to validate mamaprint took us 12 years. Um, what does it mean, validate a biomarker? Well, first of all, the initial data on mamaprint were exciting, but you know, they were based on frozen material from one institution. Um, so the first thing we decided to do was to validate, to repeat the experiment on tumors from women outside of Holland. So we did a completely independent validation of the signature and the results were good. So we got very excited. And that's when we started to think about the clinical trial that would address the clinical utility of the signature and would really lead to where we are today, which is this biomarker is de definitely strong and must become accessible to women everywhere. And that's how we could finally uh, conduct this trial that involved 6,693 women from nine countries in Europe. And now these women have been followed for a long enough period of time, five years, so that we can be confident in what we are seeing. And essentially we are seeing what we were hoping to see, which is that if you have a high clinical risk, but the signature comes back low risk, we can really trust the signature. What we have shown indeed is that if these patients do not get chemo because we trust the signature, after five years of follow-up, only 5% of these women will develop metastasis. 95% will not. So somebody could ask, well, could we reduce these 5% by giving chemo? Probably yes, but we know that the difference would be very small. It would be then perhaps 4% not developing metastasis. And you cannot treat 100 women with a toxic treatment to save just one or two. So I think we have a very good demonstration that this biomarker is very robust, now needs to be incorporated next to everything else that we 
have to take into account when we make a decision about adjuvant treatment, but we are confident that chemotherapy prescription will be reduced. And the group where it's going to be interesting, of course, are the women considered clinically high risk. That's where using the signature will bring value. Because in these women, we will trust mamaprene, and that means that one in two of these high-risk women will no longer get chemotherapy. And that's a very significant advance. Measuring clinical risk uh, is not easy, as you can imagine. And uh, what we decided to do in MindAct was really to try to standardize this clinical evaluation by using a computerized tool developed by Dr. Ravding here in the US. Uh, it's called Adjuvant Online and it has been refined over the years. It's not perfect, but it's probably one of the most robust ways to evaluate the risk of relapse without chemotherapy without any treatment, in fact. And after that, the tool allows you to evaluate what would be the benefit if you would prescribe endocrine treatment, if you would prescribe on top of endocrine treatment, chemo. So you can then discuss with your patient, based on these estimations, whether it is really worthwhile to consider chemotherapy, yes or no. And in fact, what you enter in the computer are the patient characteristics, the age, whether there are comorbidities, then you enter characteristics regarding the tumor, but those are really dominated by the anatomy. So it's the tumor size, it's whether or not there are positive nodes, and then there are a few biological features like the tumor grades and the presence or not of hormone receptors, the overexpression or not of the HER2 receptor. All that is entered in the computer and that gives you then this figure what is the likely probability that the patient will be alive 10 years later. So that's what we used in MindAct and I think that this was the most robust tool that we could use. It's still valid today, by the way, and so it, it is still used by many clinicians in routine clinical practice. So the primary goal of MyDact was uh, to demonstrate in one very specific group of patients in the trial that they would have an excellent outcome without chemo. And that was precisely the group where Adjuvant Online would tell us the patient is high risk, Mamaprint would tell us it's a low risk tumor, we would trust Mamaprint and we would not give chemo. So these women now have been followed for five years and we have demonstrated that they have an excellent outcome, whether or not they receive chemo in fact. But the primary test was on those who did not receive chemo, were not allocated to receive chemo. And um, because we reached this excellent outcome, the trial can be considered positive. That was really the primary test of MindDAC. The take-home message for clinicians is that it is really very hard today to de-escalate treatment. There is a lot of over-treatment in oncology, and I think the, the good news is that thanks to this huge effort behind the MindAC trial, we can really now reduce the prescription of chemotherapy in early breast cancer. This is very, very important, I think, for women.